Hi guys, welcome back to the CFS channel. Today we are finally starting the binary search tree series. So the next few videos will be on BSTs. And it is a topic that seems very easy, but actually can be a bit tricky if you don't understand the concept of trees properly, if you have a bit trouble writing code. So this is a topic which will make you very, very confident about the code, about how to write it, about handling the edge cases. Interviewers love confusing people with BST questions. In fact, today we are not going to be just discussing the introduction. We are also going to be doing a question which is check for BST. And this is a very common question. In fact, according to me, this is the most common BST question that is asked in interviews. And I have been asked this, honestly. So without wasting any time, let's just start with the introduction. So in order to understand the introduction, I've taken a very simple example. I've drawn a random tree over here. So what does the definition of BST say? It seems very easy, but there's a trick point over here. So let's take an example and let's understand what does it actually mean. So it says that all the nodes in the left subtree, so basically this is the root node, all the nodes in the left subtree should have keys which are smaller than the key of this root node. So suppose this is 8, then all the nodes over here should have values which is less than 8. And all the nodes over here should have values that are greater than 8. Okay. Now sometimes it can be greater than or equal to or less than or equal to. It is explicitly mentioned but if it is not mentioned then you can just assume that it will be less than or greater than condition. Okay. I know you must be thinking that this is fairly easy to understand that all the nodes in the left subtree are smaller than the root node and the root node is smaller than all the nodes in the right subtree. Very easy to understand right. But the point over here is that the left subtree which is this point should also be BSD. So this right subtree should also be a BSD. So the left subtree is also BST, right subtree is also BST. What does that actually mean? Let's see what does that mean. So that means that in this left subtree also, so this is the root node. So all the nodes on the left should be smaller than this one and all the nodes on the right should be greater than this one. Similarly, in the right subtree also, since this is also BST, again, all the nodes in the left subtree should be smaller than this one and this should be greater than this one. Now you might be thinking that, okay, this is again very easy to understand. But when we start writing the code, it becomes a bit tricky because why? Here you have to understand that even this node, this node over here should be less than this. Why is that? See, because this entire thing should be less than this. And this entire thing should be greater than this. So even if I am talking about, say, this particular node, then this node has to be greater than this node. Or say any node in this has to be less than this. Similarly, any node in this has to be greater than this, right? So you have to understand how it works. Now, when we convert it into code, you will understand what that, what is the problem that we face. So let's get to the question now and let's just start writing the code. So this is the question that we are going to be doing today. So it says check for BST and we are given the definition of BST also. So as we had discussed, the left subtree of a node contains only nodes with keys less than the nodes key. Similarly, in right, it should be greater than and both left and right subtrees should be a binary search trees okay so we are given some example also see this is a binary search tree why because see this is two one is less than two and three is greater than two you can see over here here the conditions are strictly less than and greater than the equal to conditions are not there so it is important to discuss such things oh even over here so is this a binary search tree or not so again what does a binary tree mean that means the children can be either zero one or two so here there is no problem, it can be a binary search tree, but the problem is that, you know, uh, 6 is less than 7, similarly say 5 is less than 6, that should not be the case. Suppose it was 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, then it would have been a binary search tree. So this is not a binary search tree, that is why the output is 0. Okay, now let's try writing the code. Uh, I wanted to pause and think about the possible solution yourself and now when we discuss we are going to discuss a possible solution and understand whether it will work or not and then start writing the code okay now suppose this is the tree given to us and the root is 8 now you will say what will we do in the left subtree we will pass 8 and we will check that okay all the values should be less than 8 similarly over here we will pass the value 8 and we will check that all the values should be greater than 8 right so now let's suppose we do that we pass 8 over here now say the value over here was 2, okay. So we check that, okay, 2 is less than 8, it works. So now what we do, we have to check that, okay, left subtree is also a BST, right. That's what we saw. So left subtree should also be a BST. So in order to check that, what do we do? We pass 2 over here. Now suppose the value over here was 10. 
so we will see that okay in the right subtree the value is 10 which is greater than 2 it works right so we will again return true but in reality this should actually return false why is that now i wanted to pause and think about it if you are not sure about it yet again to make it easy to understand so here our root node was 8 here the value on the left was 2 and here the value on the right was 10. Now let's try and understand whether this is a PST or not. So the value over here is 8 and the value on the left is 2 which is actually less than 8. So it should be true. And here also this is 10 and this is 2. So this should also be true because the right value is greater than the root. right? But the problem is the entire left nodes like the all the nodes in the left subtree should be less than 8 which is not the case. Here 10 is there which is actually greater than 8. And this is the case where most of the people get stuck. Similarly, you could be stuck in a problem on the right side also. Say you had a value 8 over here. Okay, and here you got the value 10. Now again, this is true, right? Now you will check over here again if this was 2. Now you will see that, okay, 2 is less than 10. Uh, it is on the left side and again 8 is less than 10 it is again on the left side so this works this should return true but it should actually return false why is that because the entire nodes all the nodes on the right subtree should actually be greater than 8 which is not true this 2 is also on the right subtree of 8 right so this should return false but it is returning true so now this is the problem now I want you to let me know in the comments whether this was the approach that you were thinking honestly and whether you missed this case or not so in order to understand these cases what you need to do is take a pen and paper and actually dry run and understand whether it will work or not you see what values are you going to pass if i pass 8 over here if i pass 2 over here should this return true why is this wrong i want you to think like that okay now let's try to come up with the right solution now in order to come up with a solution let's think like this that the value of the root over here can be actually anything it can be from int minimum to int maximum like whatever the range of numbers is possible in the data it can be done right so minus infinity to infinity i'm writing just to make it easy that okay the minimum value to the maximum value now all the nodes in the left subtree what should be the range of these numbers what should be the range so suppose the value over here was 8 okay so the range should be minus infinity to 8 why is that because all the numbers over here should be less than 8 right so what should the range of the numbers what should be the range of the keys of the nodes basically when i say numbers i hope you can understand that i'm talking about the keys of the nodes i hope at least this much is clear when you talk about trees so in the left subtree all the keys should be between minus infinity and 8 similarly in the right subtree all the keys should be between 8 to infinity that means whether you talk about this one or this one or this one or this one or this one any one this should be the range okay similarly when you go over here you pass the range again now suppose the value over here was 2 so now the left subtree of this should have the range what it should be minus infinity to 2 so basically you're reducing your range right so what do we do in binary search also we keep reducing our search space similarly over here we know that there's a constraint of the values that the keys can have right so we are using that sort of now suppose the value goes out of the range we will know that okay this is not a binary search tree and we will return false if it is within the range we are going to return true if it is not clear take a few examples we will be writing the code now you can try run and see why it is true or not before writing the code doing a quick recap so the root node can have values from minus infinity to infinity basically it can have any values now suppose the value over here is x so all the left nodes should have values less than x so the range of all these nodes should be between minus infinity to x now suppose here it was y so the range of all these nodes should be minus infinity to y similarly over here all the values range should be from x to infinity now suppose the value over here is z then this number should lie within z to infinity why because it should be greater than infinity now any number greater than z will do so from z to infinity so if you check in the left subtree our like minus infinity will remain same because minimum value can be anything right but our constant becomes on the bigger value similarly on the right subtree what happens the value can be any big right because we're talking about the right subtree but we start putting constant of the left value i hope it makes a bit sense you understood why the previous approach won't work and why this approach would work if you have any doubts try dry running the code and still if you have any doubts let me know i'm here to help you out let's start writing the code 
So this is the function that we have to complete and we are given a tree over here. Here you can expand and see how node looks. So there is data. So this is the value that we are going to be comparing. This is a left node and there is a right node, right? So this is how our structure looks. Let's start writing the code now. So we have to deal with the range of values and see whether our data value is within this range or not, right? So I'm going to be writing a helper function over here. We are going to be using recursion. Since it is trees, I hope you have understood that much. If you have any trouble in recursion, you can go check out the playlist. We have covered a lot of questions of recursion over there. And let me know if you still have any doubts or questions. Okay, so let's just start writing the function. Here again, we are going to be returning bool only. We are, I'm just calling it helper. It's a recursive function, okay? And I will be passing the node to it, okay? I'm just calling it node. Now, what do we need to pass? We need to pass the minimum value and the maximum value between which the range should be, okay? So I'm going to pass minimum value. Uh, I'm going to call it minimum val and I'm going to pass a maximum value. I'm just going to call it maximum val, okay? So now what I need to do, I need to check that if the node is not null, okay? So again, we have to start thinking of these edge cases ourselves. So if the node is not there itself, that means it is a null node. So what happens in that case, if there is no node, that means it is a BSD, right? Because all the conditions are actually true. So we return true. So we have already checked that the node should not be null. If it is null, we are already returning true. Now next, we have to compare the node ka data. Okay, so what are we going to do? We are going to be comparing node ka data. Now node ka data should be greater than minimum value. So right, so if it is less than the minimum value or if the node ka data, so what node ka data should be greater than minimum value and less than maximum value. So I am putting the opposite sign. So if it is less than the minimum value or if it is greater than the maximum value, I am just going to return false, right? So this is one way of writing code. We are actually going to discuss multiple ways of writing code. Uh, instead of writing the negative cases, you could be writing the positive cases. It's just difference of writing the code, okay? Now, otherwise, what do we return? We check the left subtree as well as the right subtree. So we are going to call the functions again. So now, again, see, the left subtree should also be a BSD and the right subtree should also be BSD. So it is what? It is an AND condition, right? And so again, okay, let me just write it like this. So this one I'm going to call for the left subtree and this one I'm going to call for the right subtree. Why is there an AND condition in between? See, both of them are returning a Boolean value. So if the left one is also a BSD and the right one is also BSD, then we are going to be returning true, okay? So if for the left one, we are going to be passing what? We are going to be passing node ka left, okay? And what is the minimum value? The minimum value is going to remain same because we are talking about the left subtree. So you remember we used to pass minus infinity, minus infinity, then left uh, constant is going to be remaining same. And the right constant is going to become what? It is going to be node ka data. See, now all the values in the left subtree should be between what is minus infinity or the minimum value and the new node value that we have, okay? Similarly, in the right subtree, what are we going to be passing? First of all, we are going to be passing node ka right. So that is the new node that we are going to be passing. And the minimum value is going to become what? It is going to become node cut data because we are talking about the right subtree. So this should be the minimum value and the maximum value is going to remain same. You remember in the diagram, the maximum value was infinity, infinity, infinity. It remains same, but the minimum value was changing, right? Now let's call the function from the main function and see whether this works or not. So we are going to be passing the root and what is the minimum value? It is int min in our case. So that is the range that is given to us and the maximum one was int max, okay? So this is going to be returning a boolean and we can actually return the same boolean as it is. So now let's run and see whether this works or not. Okay, I had wrote small v instead of capital V. Now let's compile. It compiled, now let's submit and see. So we have passed all the test cases. Now, I had talked about various ways of writing the code. There are many, many ways in which we can be writing this code. One example over here is that here we are checking again and again that if node is not uh, null, then we are returning true. Other, instead of doing that, what we could be doing is we could be checking over here that if the root is not null, you return true. And what I could be doing is that here I could be checking. See, instead of calling the left one and then checking inside that, I will check over here only that only if node ka left is there, then what am I going to do? I am going to call the function. Otherwise, I am going to presume that, okay, the answer for this one is true only. 
similarly over here also what i can do instead of calling the function again and again what am i going to be doing i'm going to be checking that if node ka right is there then i'm going to call the function otherwise i'm going to be returning true itself right so i can just comment this out and now let's see whether this works or not so this compiled now let's submit and see works right now let's try to understand the pros and cons of writing the code in both the ways see over here what was happening i was checking it again and again and over here what i'm doing is i'm checking previously itself and i'm saving the number of function calls that i'm doing so these are basically recursive calls right so i am saving recursive calls by checking it previously itself now your interviewer might actually confuse you by asking that what is the best way of doing it see some people will say that it is better to add this check say instead of call this function calling some other function was calling so it is better to add this check that just in case you know our code should be such that it never crashes so if we don't add this check and if any other function passes null over here and we try to call like null ka data is less than minimum value if we start comparing like that obviously our code is going to crash so it is good to have an extra check but in order to save the number of recursive calls we can add this check over here also so it is just about different priorities if you are sure that okay no other function is going to call it then maybe we can skip this and if you don't want to make the code complicated if you don't want to add this extra check so that node ka left is there or not then you can just add check over here then you don't have to add the checks over here so it's just different ways of writing code let's discuss the last point of the video what is the time and the space complexity because we should be able to understand that here if you notice that for every single node we are checking that okay the node lies within this range or not now if okay, suppose the node is not within range we return false but in worst case we are going to be checking all the nodes right if all the nodes are in the range or not that means if we have we were returning true then that means that we are checking for all the nodes so we are visiting all the nodes once so the time complexity becomes order of n where n is the number of the nodes okay and what is the space complexity see here we are using recursion so there is some recursive space that we are using okay how much is the space that we are using it is order of h where h is the height of the tree why is that see at any particular time you will be going down one branch of the tree only so if you are going down the left sub tree you will be checking 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 and then you will come back and then you will go to the right sub tree go 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 then you will come back so worst case whatever is the height of the sub tree that will be the size of a recursive stack if you have any doubts let me know i hope this makes sense to you tomorrow we are going to be picking up a harder question i know i have uh, put up a video after very long time but the next few videos of bsts are already recorded and edited so you don't have to worry i just have to make them public every day so the videos are going to come so i hope you are going to show up and i i hope you are going to like the series if you have any questions let me know i would be very happy to take it up see you tomorrow tata bye bye